so we know all about the xylem and the phloem. But now we need to know exactly how water and minerals move around the plant. You should already know about the structure of the leaf, but if not, watch this video to remind you. Let's have a look at transpiration and the xylem. Transpiration is the evaporation of water from the aerial parts of the plant, so the leaves and stems. By water evaporating out of these parts, mostly the leaves, a suction pressure is created which draws up the water through the plant. This is called the transpiration pull. But what exactly happens in transpiration? Let's start at the roots. Roots have root hairs, giving them a large surface area for water absorption. Water passes in from the soil by osmosis, passing down the concentration gradient and into the root hair cell's cytoplasm, and then onto the xylem vessels. Water moves through the xylem vessels from the root to the stem to the leaf. Transpiration at the leaf causes a transpiration pull, and because water molecules are cohesive, water is pulled up through the plant in the transpiration stream. As well as the leaf cells needing water for photosynthesis, Water also keeps the cells turgid, which supports the plant. Inside the leaves, water is drawn out of the xylem cells to replace the water lost through transpiration. Because of the cohesive nature of water, which also pulls the water through the plant, as water leaves the xylem and moves into the leaf, it again pulls more water molecules behind it. But it isn't just about water. The transpiration stream also transports mineral ions that are dissolved in the water from the roots to the leaves. The transpiration rate isn't constant. There are many different factors that affect it. The environmental factors are similar to those that make you sweaty. The temperature, the humidity, but also wind and light intensity. Then there are also physical factors, like does it have a waxy cuticle? How many stomata does it have? The nature of the guard cells, how large is the leaf surface area, and if the leaf is folded or flat. If the rate of transpiration increases, then the rate of water absorption by the roots needs to increase too. When water is scarce, or if the roots are damaged, the plant needs to reduce its transpiration rate by closing some of their stomata. There are guard cells on either side of the stomata, which regulate this. During daylight hours, chloroplasts produce sugar. This lowers the water potential of the guard cells, and they take in water by osmosis. This makes the guard cells turgid, because the guard cells have a different cell wall thickness when turgid, they bend more on the outside into sausage shapes. This opens the stomata, or the pore. Water can then be lost. During the night, all the sugar produced by the chloroplasts gets used up, so the water potential of the guard cells increases. More water, less sugar. The guard cells lose water by osmosis and become flaccid, and the stomata starts to close. This reduces water loss. So you now know about water movement through the plant, up the xylem, and pulled along the transpiration stream by the transpiration pull. And unsurprisingly, the plant has methods to control water loss by closing the stomata, based upon how flaccid or turgid the guard cells are. So in the final part of this video, we are going to look at the movement of glucose. After all, water may be important, but so is food.